Hello and welcome to the Car Care Dot channel. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Toyota and Lexus V6 3.5 liter 2GR FE disassembly to fix a common leak on these engines from the front timing cover. So this is not going to be a live video. It will be pictures of the whole process from start to finish with narrative so you can see exactly what's involved and why this job costs a small fortune. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start with the job. Here's the engine before, let's raise the car up, take the shield off, drain the coolant while the coolant is draining. We're gonna take a few more, the engine cover, let the coolant drain. Let's remove the intake, the battery and the battery tray. And then we're gonna remove the air filter box, upper and lower. Then we're gonna take the fuse block apart so we can disconnect the wire harness. Now, this is a 15 Highlander that we're working on, oil drive. The brake reservoir, brake fluid reservoir has to come apart. There's a little bracket that blocks the whole plastic of the fuse block so that's why you see it hanging there then meanwhile we're doing all the work i'm gonna recover the ac so we can disconnect the lines later now i'm gonna move on to disconnect some more uh, electrical wires there's one from the engine computer the evap line is out the wire from the starter that's staying on the body so this is the the not difficult, I don't want to call it difficult, but this is the part where you have to kind of mentally imagine what's going to stay with the engine coming down and what's going to stay on the body. We're going to take off the transmission lines, the ones that go to the cooler. That is one that I'm guilty of forgetting all the time. So here they are, they're out. Then we're going to disconnect the shifter cable that's also staying on the body. Here it goes off and also the fuel line because the fuel line stays on the body, but the line that goes to the injector rail, that's staying. And then we're gonna take some coolant hoses, heater core hoses, and then the main radiator hose, that comes off. And now I'm gonna kinda tuck the wires all on top of the engine. Now at this point, everything is ready to come down on this side of the engine. Then we're gonna move to the middle, and usually I like to work from one side to the other. We're gonna take the dipstick out, and it's very hard to see, but I also disconnected the AC lines from the compressor. Now moving on to this side, we're gonna take the coolant hose out, and we're gonna take the side motor mount. Now we lift the car up, take the wheels off, we're gonna take uh, these little apron covers. I only take one side off, the other side you can, you can leave it there, but that's how I do it. At this point, we're gonna start at the bottom, we're gonna remove the exhaust, that's the first thing that usually goes, and then that little plastic cover also goes. Then we're gonna drain the oil and the oil filter, because we're gonna take the oil pan out. Here's that filter out. Then I'm gonna start to remove the oil pan, and in order to remove the oil pan, there's one bolt that is kind of too close to the subframe to get a socket to it. So I'm gonna raise up the engine a little bit. Now, of course, to raise the engine up like that, I had to take the three nuts for the mount, for the engine mount on the side there. Here's the oil pan out. And then I'm gonna take that oil pickup as well. The idea here is I'm trying to take the sub pan, which is what you see right here. That needs to come out because that overlaps on the front cover. And it's very difficult to do that when the engine is on the ground. So then, before I remove that sub pan, there's actually the oil cooler line that has to come off, which you can see the edge of it there. In order to make that job easier, there's these brackets that hold the subframe, that kind of support the subframe. I usually like to take them out first. So here's all four of them out and just leave the, the subframe bolt holding everything. Then we're gonna tackle the uh, oil cooler line, which you see it, it's out here, kind of a bare. This one to replace, and these are the one in the older models that used to be rubber and used to rupture all the time. So now I'm gonna start heading towards removing all the bolts for the sub pan, and here's the sub pan out. Now we're gonna start working on disconnecting the suspension, steering shaft, it's gonna come last. I usually leave it last so it wouldn't move the steering as much, so it makes the alignment much easier. Now one thing I will say about this, there's multiple ways to do this. Some guys will pull the whole strut down with the car, some guys will leave the brakes on, leave the strut in the car. This is how I do it. I just disconnect the axle, disconnect the ball joint and the steering rack and the sway bar link and just leave it everything with the car and, and the axle and the steering will come down with the subframe. That's just the way I do it. It makes the alignment a little quicker toward the end and really doesn't, doesn't 
take that much longer to do that. So here's the other side as well. Now I'm gonna take that motor mount and this motor mount actually, the way it mounts, it sits, it blocks a few of the bolts for the front timing cover. So here's that motor mount out. Now we're gonna take the steering shaft out. Here it is, it's out and we're ready at this point to uh, pull everything down. Well, forgot one more thing. The drive shaft is connected, so here is that disconnected. And I usually just leave it hanging there so we won't have to drain the transfer case. It just hangs, it doesn't really affect anything. Of course, you gotta mark it so it goes back to the same spot. This point, we get our trusty table and ready to bring the engine and the whole cradle down. Now, here's a video of me doing that. And uh, usually, you know, you raise the car up a little bit, you walk around, check, make sure everything is good. Make sure nothing was left un unhooked or, you know, the whole, just making sure we don't want to damage anything. And once, uh, once that's done, the engine is down. Here's a shot of that when, how the whole, this is by the way, how they assemble the car in the factory. That's why it's, simple to uh, bring it down. I mean, yeah, you might think it's not simple, but it's actually simple if you've done, I don't know, three, 400 of these. So now that we got this, let's move the harness out of the way. We're gonna tackle the first thing is the plenum. We wanna take that out and so we can get to the back valve cover and all that. Here's that bracket that usually is a pain to do when you're doing spark plugs, very easy now. Let's remove the throttle body, just hang it to the side. We pull the plenum out, cover the hole so nothing falls in the engine. At this point, we're gonna start working on the wire harness. And in order to do the wire harness, you gotta remove the compressor. And in order to remove the compressor, you got this is how the Lego starts working. So the first order of business is, we're gonna try to get that compressor out. Remove the drive belt, then we're gonna disconnect some of the wiring harness going to it. And then once the whole wire harness is disconnected, belt is gone, we're gonna pull that compressor out. Behind the compressor is a crankshaft position sensor connector. You see it right there? That's gonna get disconnected. And then I'm gonna move on to the alternator because it's much easier because there's a second bracket to the alternator where that wire connects to. So just removing that. Now let's remove the wiring harness from on top on the one of the valve covers, here it is. Just tuck it to the back and out of the way. We're also gonna remove the ignition coils. We're gonna do the same thing with the harness in the back side. remove all the wiring, and then the coils, and there's that little bracket on the side that covers the rail. Some of the models don't have it. I don't even know why it's there. It must serve a purpose. I don't see it because not all of them do, and it's the same engine. So now, let's remove our alternator. Let's remove some of the idler pulleys and the tensioner. This tensioner is a small nightmare to do in the car because you gotta pull the compressor. There's not much room really there. So here it is out. Now let's start kind of working towards removing the valve covers. So the valve covers have these two VVTi lines that run on the side. You see them here. So there's this uh, little cover here, also doesn't really do much. Let's disconnect the lines. Let's get the first line out and the second one. So that big line in the back, that's the one that used to be rubber in the old models and used to leak all the time and rupture and it was a disaster. So there it is, this one is a 15, so it has the old metal line. Also these lines will have that little filter just to filter the oil going to the VVTi gears. So now we're gonna remove the valve cover. Let's. Uh, Remove all the bolts and do the same for the back one. And here it is. Here is the uh, camshafts and the chain. Well, by the way, we're not doing anything with the chain. This engine has an internal um, timing chain tensioner, so we don't have to really do anything with the timing. At this point, we're just gonna remove our water pump pulley and start draining. I usually start draining the coolant from the water pump. He always makes a mess, so I start that. Then while it's draining slowly, I'll Remove that little bracket on the side and the thermostat housing. Once that's all out, we're gonna remove the water pump. You can leave the water pump on the front cover, but I usually like to remove it. Just makes handling the front cover a little easier. So here's that water pump out. Let's remove the crank pulley. And then we're gonna remove a whole bunch of bolts that hold the uh, front timing cover on. And here it is, it's out. Here's the front cover and here's how that looks with all the cams and the cam gears and the, the 
timing chain. I might have posted a few pictures of this on Instagram. You might have seen it before, but here's how that looks again. Here's the front cover. And here's the uh, mess of bolts. Well, it's actually not a mess, but I don't know. That's how I arrange my bolts and never had a problem. Every bolt goes back where it belongs. Here is all the parts. I just, it looks like a giant mess, but I actually arrange them in a specific way all the time in order of where they're going to go back. And here is the other parts. So now let's start with the assembly. We're halfway point now. Things are getting serious. Here is the uh, part on the engine. I'll clean all the old sealer, make sure everything is nice and dry and oil free. Blast all the debris out. Let's clean the front timing cover. Now that's also ready to go. We install one little gasket that, uh, because the oil pump is inside the front cover. So that's one of the gaskets that feeds oil to the engine. Forget that, we're gonna have major problems because uh, there's no oil pressure at that point. You gotta take the whole thing apart just to put this little innocent looking gasket. So then let's apply some sealer to the front cover, put the front cover back, put all the bolts, torque and spec, life's good there. Let's install a water pump. And this has to happen quick because your sealer is drying. And actually the water pump has, some of the bolts of the water pump, this, the 12 millimeter ones, they actually hold the, the sealer also, they hold the front cover on. So you gotta do this quick. Same thing with the thermostat housing. Not the thermostat housing itself, but that bracket that goes on top of it also holds the sealer in place. So you gotta do this quick. Put the thermostat housing, put the bracket. At this point, you could take a breather because you're done with the front cover sealer part. Then we're gonna move on to reinstall the valve covers. I usually do this in a very quick fashion, just trying to minimize the debris that gets inside the engine leaving it open like that. Behind the valve cover, there are three little caskets each side. That's the same in all two GRFEs, not FKS. That engine is a little different with the plastic valve covers, but they all have these three gaskets. And here's the valve cover on, back on, torque to spec, and the coils. Same thing on the other side. And then let's install our VVTI lines with new gaskets. Here they are. And that bracket is back as well as that cover. Now let's install our crank seal. I usually leave the crank seal for last. It just makes it easier to install. And sometimes when you install it, like the crankshaft snout will hit it, will hit the seal and damage it. That has happened to me. And then you start the car and it starts leaking. So I started not putting the front cover, front uh, crank seal until I install the cover and then install the seal. It's very easy to install like that. Then let's put our crank pulley. Let's put to start assembling all our pulleys. Here is that, uh, Drive belt tensioner on, alternator back on. Let's start assembling our wire harness. Here's the wire harness back. Let's put that uh, little connector for the crank position sensor. And let's install our compressor. Let's put the drive belt back. Now we're just in, a, in the quick assembly. Let's go to the back side, do the same, install the wire harness. Let's put our intake plenum back with new gaskets. And connect a few connectors, tighten everything, torque to spec. Here is the throttle body back. And then we re -put, I re-put the uh, harness back so it doesn't get damaged when the, when the thing goes back. And now let's do a little bit of cleanup. It's much easier to clean this area that gets really messy from cleaning the front cover. It's much easier to clean it in the ground. So here it is, much better right there. So you won't have all that debris living with the car as the customer takes the car back. Now we're ready to uh, put this thing back in the car. So let's do that. Voila, here it is. The first thing I do is install the steering shaft because I don't want the steering moving on me too much. And then it, it's kind of very time consuming to recenter the rack and all this mess. So I put that first. Then let's install our motor mount back. And now let's put the drive shaft back. And let's start cleaning to install our sub pan. Clean that, clean this. Here's the other two O-rings that actually, those are the ones that go to the oil filter. So here's those two O-rings and uh, some more sealer. And here's that sub pan back installed and torqued. Now let's install the oil cooler line, which is a giant fight all the time. Here it is. At this point, let's install our pickup, oil pickup tube. And let's clean the oil pan, which now looks disgusting. Here it is, much better. Let's put some sealer. Let's install it back in the oil filter as well. Now I'm going to put these little support brackets for the subframe. Here's four, all four of them installed. At this point, I'm going to install the exhaust back. Here it is. Let's reassemble our suspension real quick. That's all reassembled with a new axle nut. 
Now we bring the car down, let's put our, you notice that some of this uh, reassembly is exact opposite of assembly because I'm going in a specific order that I've established over the years, you know, doing this hundreds of times, you, you establish a specific order of things. So let's put the side mount on, let's put that radiator hose on. We're gonna put the AC lines back, sorry you can't see them, they're really hard to film there. And the dipstick back. Now let's start working on the side of the engine. Let's reinstall first our fuel line and the shifter cable. And then let's install some coolant hoses, the two for the heater core and then the one from the radiator. And now let's assemble our wiring harness. One goes to the computer, one goes back to the fuse block and uh, one for the starter and everything is reassembled. I already put the fuse block cover back and the brake fluid reservoir back. At this point, let's install our transmission lines. That's not to have a, well, I remember one time I forgot those and it made a, quite a mess. That was a big mess. So let's make sure to install those again. Now let's start assembling some of our um, fluff. I call it the fluff. It's just the small stuff that comes out in five minutes. So here is the air box and the air filter. Here is the uh, top of that. Some few connectors here and there for the mass airflow and that little ram air intake, if you would. Battery tray, the battery is back. At this point, we're just gonna fill her up with fluids, say a quick prayer, and hopefully I didn't forget anything. And here's a, here's a video of that car running. Runs pretty good, I'm happy with it. At this point, we're all done with the car, bleed it, clean it, check it, install the rest of the covers, and here she looks complete. Wait a minute, that, that looks just terrible. That's much better, I like that. I usually clean the engine covers, even though most people will never reopen really the hood when they bring the car to dealership. It just satisfies my OCD that I worked on this car, and it just looks cleaner afterwards, I don't know. That's just me. One thing I always forget is the AC. Let's recharge that and uh, life is good. That's one job completed. After that, of course, take it for test drive, alignment, all this other stuff, make sure everything is good. I usually start my cars the next day, early in the morning after I sat overnight just to make sure everything's perfect and then she's ready to hit the road again. So there you have it, folks. That was a little bit of work. It's not bad. I've done a lot of these and very familiar with this job, but this will give you a glimpse of why this job costs a small fortune. I hope you liked this video. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber already. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.